for today's video, I wanted to show you how I created this smoky berry makeup look. This video is actually sponsored by e.l.f. Cosmetics, which of course stands for Eyes, Lips, Face. They're celebrating their 16th birthday this year. e.l.f. is the first makeup brand that I really had a collection of products of because it was so affordable and still really great quality. It allowed me to really get out of my comfort zone and play with different colors, different products, and so I'm always gonna have a special place in my heart for e.l.f. Since e.l.f. is one of the first makeup brands that really got me into learning and experimenting, I thought in this video I would cover some makeup basics, some really easy formulas to create smoky eye looks of any color. So I'm really excited to share that. I think I've talked about it here and there in other videos, but it's nice to just put it all in one video. You can still watch this video if you're not a makeup beginner. I think you can still pick up a few things here and there. So let's get started. I'm gonna start off by priming my face. I'm gonna use e.l.f.'s Poreless Putty Primer. A little bit of this goes a really long way. It's tackier than other primers I've used, but it really helps to smooth out the skin and blur your pores. Now to prime my eyes, I'm going to use Japonesque's Velvet Touch Eyeshadow Primer. I really like this primer as well. This primer really is so velvety. I already put on a little bit of lip balm. This is their Ride or Die lip balm in the shade Tuff Cookie. It just has a little bit of tint to it. I get so annoyed sometimes when I'm editing my videos and my lips look so dry. I'm like, girl, why have you not learned to put on any lip balm yet? For my base today, I'm gonna skip foundation and just do concealer and have that be my foundation. I'm using e.l.f.'s Camel Concealer. This is their number one best-selling concealer and I actually got the hydrating formula because my skin tends to get a bit dry, especially since we're going through a heat wave right now. Any hydration I can get, I am all for. So I'm just going to apply this to my under eye area and around my mouth because that's where a lot of my dark spots are. I still tend to break out quite a bit in that area. And then just add a few strokes here. I'm also using the e.l.f. Total Face Sponge. I really like this sponge because of how big it is. I find that it doesn't absorb too much of the product, so you can really get good payoff on your products with this. And I really love the way the sponge feels because there's so much surface area too. I feel like I'm really giving my face a nice little massage. Next, I'm gonna use our Halo Glow Setting Powder, and this gives your skin the nicest glow. The powder is really lightweight, so right when you put it on your face, it doesn't feel heavy at all like some powders do, and it just gives your skin a really nice overall glow. So I just take a little bit and dab it around. I don't like to bake or anything like that. As you all know, I don't really, I don't bake at all. This is probably the longest my hair has been in a while, and I really love the slick back hair look, but uh, the problem is the top of my head is like pretty flat, but down here it's so poofy, and it's really hard to get that sleek hair look on me without straightening everything, but that would just completely damage my hair, I'm sure. <laughs> my hairstylist was specifically like, do not straighten your hair. Um, next, I'm going to use their Instant Lift Brow Pencil to fill in my brows. This pencil is really easy to work with and I find that it gives your brows a really nice, natural look. And this is, I think, in their darkest shade. I don't remember, I will link it down below what shade this is, but since my roots are growing out, it's kind of like the best match for it. Like it will still match my hair. I especially like using the spoolie towards the front of my brows. What I'll do is I'll draw like a little line at the bottom and then use the spoolie to brush the product upwards to create a softer look. We're gonna move on to the eyeshadows next. So I have here two of their bite size eyeshadows and this makes me so nostalgic because when I was a teenager and first diving into makeup, I owned every single one of these bite size eyeshadow palettes because they were so affordable. The way they packaged these shade ranges together in each palette just made it really easy to work with colors and learn how to work with colors. If you're experimenting with makeup for the first time and you want to try out different colors, I highly recommend these palettes because they're very pigmented. They already have a color scheme for you to work with. I pretty much had this like little formula in college on how to do a smoky eye and it's pretty much just going down this line of shades like I would start with this as a base this for the inner corner this for the outer corner and this to kind of smoke it out and darken in the outer corner or as a liner so that was kind of like my makeup formula and I still stick by that formula like that is kind of the basis of how I create my makeup looks anyway <laughs> let's go on to this berry makeup look. We're going to this palette. So first I'm going to take this shade right here. This is like a light pink shade. I'm just going to apply that all over the lid. 
And the amount of how much shadow I put on my eyes and how far up I go really depends on if I want to wear falsies that day or not. Because if I'm wearing fake lashes, I can bring it up higher. If I just want to do a mascara look, then I'll keep it closer to the lash line so that it's not so unbalanced, if you know what I mean. I've been really just into mascara lately, so I think I want to keep it closer to the lash line. And if I change my mind and want to do falsies, I can always just add more shadow after. Now I'm going to take the second shade in the palette and put it in the inner half of my eye. When I first started doing makeup, shimmery shades were much easier to work with. They were more forgiving. But I love that these palettes come with a mixture of both so you can really play around with it. Also, these brushes are e.l.f. defining eye brushes and I've had these for a really long time. These are my favorite eyeshadow brushes because they just are really easy to work with and just blend out the eyeshadow color so beautifully. It just is so great with application. Anyway, I'm going to take the third shade in the palette now and apply that to the outer corner of my eyes. And that's how you create this smoky gradient look. You have a base shadow that lets you blend all the colors together, but you still have like a differentiation of shades and colors, if that makes sense, because you have the lighter shade in the middle and as you work your way out, you get progressively darker. <laughs> so I'm just going to start in the outer corner and work that inwards and have the shades meet in the middle. It just goes on really pigmented, but I love that you can also blend it out really well. Now I'm going to take the last shade in the palette. This is like a plum brown, somewhere in between that. I'm using the e.l.f. eye crease brush, just working that in the outer corner and this just helps to smoke out the look even more. I'm also going to take that on a smudger brush. The bristles on this are denser, they're more packed together, so it's able to disperse more color. Add that into the outer half of the bottom lash line, like this. I'm also going to take a bit on the top again and just go across the lash line kind of like a liner. I do still want to line my eyes, so I'm going to use the e.l.f. No Budge Retractable Liner in Coffee. I'm going to tight line on the top. I always hate tight lining on camera because I look crazy. Also going to add a little bit down here, like where the ends meet. I forgot I should have done this after I curled my lashes because sometimes the lash curler can take off that part of the liner. Also going to line the top a little bit so that it creates a smudgy look. This also helps to darken your lash line. A lot of people also like to line their inner corner down here. I think this is called the tear duct. Jenny from Blackpink does this a lot with her makeup. I shall just line it like right here. Now I'm just going to curl my lashes using the three, I forgot what it was called, the three curl method, three step method, where you curl at the base, you curl in the middle, and then you curl towards the top. I find that this method is really good for monolids because of how the skin folds over. I'm going to use the Honest Beauty mascara and primer as primer on one end and then mascara on the other, which is perfect. Two products in one. I really like this mascara because it's not clumpy. Um, I realized all the other mascaras I've been using work a little bit on the clumpier end. I think it's because the brush was too big on those mascaras. And this one is like a nice thin rubbery wand, so it's just a little bit easier to comb through each lash. Do you see how that just really opened my eyes? And there you go. That's it for the eyes. I don't do mascara on my bottom lashes because they tend to get caught on the top lashes and they'll like stick together throughout the day and it just really irritates and tickles my eyes. And I feel like sometimes when you do mascara on the bottom lash line, it can make your eyes look heavier and droopier. It just doesn't really balance out as well. So that's another reason I don't tend to do that. I'm going to move on to bronzer now. This is in the shade Perpetually Tan. So I'm going to just run that down my cheekbones a little bit. I like to go in sweeping circular motions and I go pretty fast. I think this is fast. I don't know. 
Also gonna go down the jawline right here. Bronze the nose just a little bit. Now we're going to move on to blush. I'm gonna use their monochromatic stick. This is in Luminous Berry. These monochromatic sticks are multi-purpose, so you can use them on your cheeks, on your eyes, as highlighter, on your lips. This is really nice because it has a really iridescent glow to it after I apply it. And I'm gonna use my e.l.f. blush brush, also another favorite brush of mine. I've tried a lot of different blush brushes, but I always go back to this one. I find this just fits my cheeks really well. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's just perfect. So you can apply this directly on your skin, you can use the back of your fingers, but I'm not really good at using my hands, so I'm just going to pick some up on the brush like this, and then just dab a little bit onto each cheek. And then usually what I'll do is I'll flip the brush over to the side that doesn't have product and just blend it out. Even though I'm pretty much glowing already, <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of highlighter. I'm gonna use this one from Kaja Beauty. This is their Mochi Glow in the shade Luna. So I'm just gonna put a little down my nose. It's like a gold highlighter. It's very subtle, so. Okay, my lips are a little red because I tried a few different lip colors off camera already, but I finally decided on one. I'm gonna use this one from Bite Beauty. This is in the shade Brandy, and I think it'll complement the eye look pretty well. I don't have a defined lip line, so lip color is one of the hardest things for me to apply. Actually, before I finish off the look, there's one more step that I do like to do, and uh, that's to give my lashes one more little curl. And here you go, this is the final look. I really love how it turned out. I want to thank e.l.f. for making this video possible and for collaborating with me. And I want to wish them a happy sweet 16th birthday. I can't believe it's been that long. If you're interested in any of the products that I used, I will link them all down below so you can check there for all of the details. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.